Here we go guys, paper one for the level six 2015 maths. Now, as usual, I'm just going to go for a quick rundown and break through this paper. So without further ado, let's go. <clears throat> so these ones are technically considered more harder than the level three to five, more in line with uh, year nine stats, or in this case, um, closer to the GCSEs. But anyway, this will be very fast because you usually just need 30 minutes and most can do this in 15 to 20. All right, so let's have a look. Number one. The number 7.5 is halfway between 5 and 10. Now, a quick way how they calculate is that they, to find the, the middle halfway between two digits, I would personally add the two numbers up, 5 and 10, and then half it to get the number in between. It's like take, finding the mean or average. Now, let's have a go doing it for the next two digits here. Let's add 3.8 and 6, so you should get a total of 9.8, and then let's half this. So half in this, well, 2 goes into 9 exactly 4 times, remainder 1, and 2 goes into 18, 9 times. So it's 4.9. So again, it's like calculating the mean of two digits. Now, next one, minus 1 and 1. Firstly, adding these two, adding these two up, so minus 2 plus 1 should give us a negative 1. And then halving it by dividing by 2, well, you can leave it like this, minus 1 over 2 or minus 0.5. Both of these work. Okay, let's go. Number two, so two companies sell toys online. They charge to deliver. Describe the delivery cost of the second company and the first one's been done for you. So we just have to talk about the relationship between the X and Y axes. For example, you can see that this one cuts through the origin and it seems to be quite um, direct. The slope is very even. So we can say that the more the toy costs, the more the delivery costs. Seems fair. So when the delivery cost 10 is 5, when it's when you don't buy nothing, it's 0, of course. However, look at this one. This seems to be constant. There seems to be a constant delivery cost of £5 across, doesn't regardless of the cost of the toy. So we can say uh, delivery cost stays constant at £5. No, it doesn't matter if the cost of the toy changes. Okay, perfect. Number three. <clears throat> so in this tower, two numbers are multiplied to give the number above. So in this uh, multiplication tower, we can see that 4 times 3 is 12. Or 12 divided by 4 is 3, or 12 divided by 3 is 4. Let's do the same here. So we've got 75 and 24. Well, let's multiply them together. So 75 times 24, well, I would do 75 times 20 first. 75 times 2 is 150, and add a 0, 1500. And then 75 times 4, it's like times in by 2 is 150, and doubling again, 300. And that's it, adding this up will give us 1800. Now, to get the number below, we can say that something times 4 is 24. And if we're good at times table, it should be 6. Otherwise, 24 over 4 is 6. Now, to get this digit, something times 6 is 75. And you can see this would be decimal. So we could do how many 6s fit into 75. Well, it goes exactly once here, remainder 1. And then it goes into 15 twice, remainder 3. Or just put a 3 here with a 0. And 6 into 30 goes 5. So it's 12.5. Easy. So, number 4. Describing pie charts. So, 200 girls and 100 boys were asked about their favourite meal. And look what we got here. So, out of the 200 girls, a quarter like fish and chips. So, a quarter of 200 should be 50. And according to the 100 boys, 3 quarters like fish and chips. So, this should be 3 quarters of 100, which is 75 so we could say overall that uh, the total number of children would be 125 children liked fish and chips okay so let's have a look at the statement and see which one is correct so three quarters of the boys chose fish and chips yes looks looks good three times as many boys as girls chose fish and chips well we had a 75 boys and 50 girls so it doesn't look like three times so false Half of the children chose fish and chips, false. Half would be 150, but we've got 125. And 25 more girls chose fish and chips. 
yes boys right question five guys so here we go now according to this chart the scatter graph shows the test results for nine children where where each letter stands for one so when it comes to scatter graph we just need to be very careful where the points are and this seems to be a two-way one where you got geography test marks and history test marks for each of the nine pupils for example pupil e means that he scored 12, 25 in history and just over 20 probably at 21 22 in the geography <clears throat> so he's obviously the lowest scorer here anyway let's have a look so what is the range of history marks for these children well range means the difference between the highest and lowest value of history so we can see that e was the lowest history at 25 and the highest at the top was j and c 95 so it'd be 95 minus 25 which should give us 70 so that is the range of scores now what is the median geography mark for these children now the medium is the middle value of marks for geography and because geography is horizontal we can find the middle student of this list so the way i do this i just start from the beginning and cross them out so from the left from left to right this is the first on the left this is the last on the right this one b is the second d is the next on the right J would be on the, the would it be third on the left, C is third on the right, A is third on the left, G is third on the right, and then it must be F. So F scored well A is 7.5 in history and 65 in um, geography. And we want a median, so it's middle value, so it's 65. So just double checking, looking at geography, and it matches here, 65. Good. Now algebra, who I love algebra. We can do this all in a single page. So here is an equation, k equals 100 minus 4n. Find the value k when n is 60. Well, when n is 60, we can write the equation as 100 minus 4 times 60, which is 240. So 100 take with 240 is minus 140. Easy. Now, b, find the value n when k is 99. Well, using the equation here, so rewrite it as 99 equals 100 minus 4n. Rearrange the equation. So throwing minus 4n across gives us a positive 4n. And throwing 99 across will give us 100 minus 99. Not just solving this easily. 100 take away 99 is 1. And dividing n across will give us a quarter. Done. Alright, number 7. So Anna has 10 number cards in the bag. Labeled 1 to 10. She, she is going to take out one of these cards at random. And the property that the number will be a factor of 14 is three times. Why is that? So what is a factor of 14? So factors of 14 are numbers that are divisible by 14. So we can see clearly to make 14, we need 1 and 14 and or 2 and 7. And these are all the facts of 14. Now, according to the card list, we actually have three of them. We have 1, 2 and 7. So we have... 1, 2, and 7. So these are the three outcomes out of 10. So 3 out comes out of 10. Hence, 3 temps. Okay. Using the same number cards, complete the sentence below. So again, we just have to be very specific here. So since we had a factor of 14, which is 3 temps, Let's find the probability that number will be a factor of something, which is two-fifths. Now, the small thing to do is to realize that there's 10 cards, so write this over 10. So we can say that firstly, two-fifths is identical to four-tenths. So we need to pick four cards. Now, looking carefully, to pick a factor of a number, let's just find multiples of something. So let's start with one. So let's take one. Double one is two. Double two is four. Double four is eight. Now, we can see that all these numbers are factors of eight and factors of 16 so you can choose one of them factors of 8 16 and this should be fine 2 2 6 for 8 you can have 1 and 8 and 2 and 4 so or 16 as well so you can say I'll just say 16 hopefully I'm right here so 1 and 16 2 and 8 4 and 4 yep perfect okay question 8 <clears throat> So Megan uses four cubes to make this cuboid. Okay. Then she takes one cube away, leaving the other cubes where they are. So she just removes a single cube. Just draw what the new shape could be. Well, 
if we picture like this one, suppose I take away this cube. I mean, you can take any cube, but let's just say for now. This is how the shape should look like. So you should have like some kind of outline of the shape underneath it. So it looks a bit like this. Let me get a black pen. So this would be the outline of the shape and this shape would be extended here. So this would be the new shape that's been removed, okay? So let's go ahead and draw this one over here. So let's start with doing a couple of diamonds and labeling it down. So I'm gonna do from here. Okay, so this would be one cube, 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 cube. And now just looking very carefully, we just have to finish off the, the length. So this goes all the way down, so we want two cubes down. Use a, by the way, always use a ruler for this exercise, yeah? So here's one cube. Now, that's the first cube. Now we still got the bomb cubes on here, so let's line this one down. So we need another cube here. Okay, and then this one could be the, the face. And voila, here we go. And this part here was the missing cube. Easy, easy, really. Just make it look neater and use a ruler, yeah? Now, number nine. So this one's very um, articulate, so you have to be very careful. Now, let's do this. So, 90% of the children in the sports club play tennis, okay? Now, 25% of the children who play tennis, basically out of the 20% 20 also play rounders. There are eight children in the club that who play both rounders and tennis. How many children are there in the club? So technically we have to work backwards, but what I would do, I would say firstly, let N be the number of children altogether, yeah? So 20% of these children play tennis, so we can say 20% of N, 20% is like one fifth. So we can say N over five play tennis, And then 25% of these children who play tennis also play rounders. So 25% is one quarter. So one quarter of n over five is like multiplying. So it's n over 20. Also play rounders. Now according to the statement, eight children of this statement play both. So and this means that n over 20 equals eight. Equals eight children. Meaning if you multiply 20 on both sides, you get 160. So this is the number of children. So always use algebra to figure this out, making basically equations from algebra. All right. Now, next one. So using three cards of these fraction cards, complete the sum below. Now notice how everything totals to half. What I would do, I would just make all this over the same denominator, which is 40, since 40 is the highest of them all, and they all go into 40, including the answer. So one half, I would quickly change it to 40 so times it up and down by 20, I'll get 20 40s. Now making it right, right now raising everything to 40, let's just say over 40 for everything, just to show the aim. To get this to 40, we need to multiply by 10. So 1 times 10 is 10. To get this to 40, multiply by 8, so 8 40s, multiply by 4 and multiply by 2. Now to make 20, you just find four, uh, three numbers. So 10 plus 8 plus 2. So this means 10 plus 8 plus 2. And these are the cards. Really easy, seriously. All right, number 11. <clears throat> so the area of the square is 36. So if, firstly, if it's 36 centimeters and it's a square, we know they have equal length. So this, so technically, this is a, a 6 by 6 square, since 6 times 6 is 36. Or the square root of 36 is 6. Easy. Now, we know that the square is cut into, into quarters to create four identical rectangles. So if this was still length 6, if we split this side by 4, that means 6 divided by 4 is 6 over 4, or 1.5. Because just to double check, 6 over 4 is 3 over 2, and 3 halves is 1.5. Now, what is the perimeter of one of these small rectangles? Well, easy. We've got two 1.5, so that makes a total of 3. And we have two long lengths, which is 12. So 3 plus 12 is... 15 centimeters. Easy. Nice. Anna has four different triangles. Now here we just need to firstly identify what missing angles could be to show it properly the size angles. Now a complete table shows the size angles in each triangle. So suppose we're given one angle. Let's look at isosceles. One of it is 90 degrees, meaning these two need to sum up to be 90. However, because the isosceles, two of the angles must be identical. 
So if we've got 90 remaining, they must be the same. So half of 90 is 45 each. And this makes a perfect 180. Now, if a triangle is right angle, there must be a 90 degree somewhere. Since it's not specified, we call this one 90. This means to make 180, we need 10 more degrees. Isosceles. So suppose one was 70. We can also have another 70, meaning that the remainder that we have now 140, meaning we need 40 more to make 180. Again, if, the, if the, suppose we had the same triangle, but instead of being 70 isosceles, the other two angles were the same. So if we had 70 to make 180, we, we have already 110 left over. So these two must equal 110. So half in this number will give us 55 each. And that's it. This is all the combinations you can have. <clears throat> right, now, here you go. So this, this question is all about pretty much explaining what you understand about, about high soft and bar graphs of specific number of children. So according to this chart, the graph shows the height of 28 children in Alfie's class to the nearest centimeter. Okay, so these are various heights. Just understand this. The children between these heights are 5. Up to here we have 10 and 10 again. This one seems to be going up to 2 blocks and this is 1. So all of this total up to 28 children. Now according to the statement, Alfie is 153 centimeters tall. So Alfie is in this block. Is in the second last block here. This one here. Only one person in my class is taller than I am. So he's referring to this one. However, Alfie could be, there's two people, so Alfie could be shorter than the other one. You can't tell from this graph. Explain why M is correct. Well, like I said, there, there are two children in the 150 to 159 class. So there are two children in the 150 to 159 class. So Alfie could be shorter than him as well. I'll say that's pretty much clear. We could just leave it like that. Now, finally, <laughs> to wrap this up, and oh my god, this is the easiest final question ever. We just need to solve this um, two problem equation. So, equations on both sides. The objective of these kind of algebra equations is to make y equals the number. And you just have to shuffle this around. So let's have a look at this. We have 7y on the left side and 5y on the right side. The idea is to just literally reduce this equation or throw it across. I prefer throwing it. When I throw a 5y across, it becomes a negative 5y. So 7y take away 5y is a 2y. When I throw a, th a plus 12 across, it becomes minus 12. So it's 40 take away 12, which is 28. Easy, just reducing. And now to find y, well, you just half it. This is two lots of y. We want one y, so it'll be 14. So again, y equals 14. And that's it, guys. I hope, you know, this video helped. And uh, let me know if you guys got any more questions on this here. And yeah, it's been, it's been quite a ride. And I'll, I'll, I'll try and do more papers of level six, especially. Okay, anyway, see you next time. Ciao.